Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Also, I've taught at the Carleton University in the Department of Geography, as well as at Ottawa. So this is my Twitter page. Um, in this video and the next few, I'm gonna give an overview of the climate system, what's happening, and everything ties to the Arctic. The Arctic is warming very, very fast, as you know. We're getting huge temperature amplification, and this is disrupting the, um, the, the, the flow of circulation on the planet, both in the atmosphere, um, and that's manifested in the jet streams, and also in the ocean. The uh, Gulf Stream, the ocean currents are, are changing. So, just gonna get the lights to improve the contrast. So. Basically, I'm gonna focus on the Arctic, but this is just showing, you know, uh, hurricane season started June 1st. We had Alberto, which went ashore and basically maintained its shape, which is very unusual. Um, it wasn't a very strong hurricane, but it went ashore and it maintained its hurricane shape all the way up to across the US up to Lake Michigan. Um, which is very unusual. And the reason is that the jet streams haven't been dipping that low over North America. They've been up in Canada and not in the US. This is one of the main reasons why there's very, been very few tornadoes in the US this year. There's lots of energy in the atmosphere. There's lots of CAPE, which is um, the potential energy in the atmosphere, which is necessary for storms like tornadoes but you need to start the rotation of these storms you need to start the spinning and to have that you generally need the jet streams to dip down into the u.s and that um, gradient pressure gradient temperature gradient start spinning up the the uh, storm so you need the cape and you need a trigger mechanism to get these tornadoes going so there's very very few um, and we're actually seeing a number in Canada right now because the jet streams are up there and they're able to provide the rotation and um, triggering of the, of the tornadoes. So um, there's, here's a water spout. Um, I highly recommend that you have a look at my Twitter feed at Paul H. Beckwith. Please follow me if you're not and you can learn everything you might, would possibly want to know about abrupt climate system change, renewable energies, chess, multiple other things. Um, this is a storm track of two storms in Pennsylvania tonight. Now, the Antarctica, there's a, it's been in the news a lot in the last few days because parts of it are in a state of collapse. The rate of melting ice has tripled um, in the last decade, okay? so. That's a doubling period of about seven years, which is what I've been talking about for quite a while. The, the five to 10 years doubling period in terms of the loss of ice, the rate of ice loss from Antarctica and also from Greenland. So a decade, three times, um, there's a lot more calving of glaciers. There's a speed up of the flow. And this is very bad news because all this ice is on land going into the sea causing sea level rise. So um, here's another, another uh, tweet. Um, ice melting in Antarctica has raised sea levels by 7.6 millimeters since 1992, but almost half of this rise has been in the last uh, five years. And there's the total um, change to global sea level um, from this, for, so it's mostly from West Antarctica there's some from the Antarctic Peninsula, and there's not a lot of change from East Antarctica. One of the things is the amount of snow, that, because uh, these glaciers form from snow falling on the ice and getting compressed and compacted over many years and creating fern and then creating ice. Um, so there's lots of stuff on there. Um, so let me just have a look at some of the um, images um, that I've been retweeting and so on. Um, nice little thunderstorm in Ottawa this afternoon. Uh, not much lightning. 
you know, truly, truly distressing news. I mean, even, you know, a guy like McGibbon, okay, uh, you know, he knows how bad the situation is, but he's still, you know, if this is an authentic um, tweet from him, um, you know, the Antarctic is, loss is tripling over the last decade. You know, there, there's signs everywhere. I mean, this isn't a surprise. Um, lots on Antarctica, um, but on the Arctic, <coughs> so the year-to-year -year variability, um, a new article um, about Arctic moisture transport. Um, here is the Chukchi Sea, um, what it's doing in 2018. Okay, it's next, to, here's the envelope of all of the years, and this is 2017, the green one, and it's actually going along that particular route. Here's where the Chukchi Sea is. Um, basically just through the Bering Strait in the in the Arctic here. Um, let's go back and find some of the specific ones. Okay, we know the biggest risk of abrupt climate change, system change, is major crop failures. Okay, so corn and vegetables, a rising risk of food shocks and malnutrition with unchecked global warming. Okay, we're, we're, we're really playing with dice. Here's an interview with Peter Wadhams, um, talking about our greed and stupidity, um, stupid urban vehicles, SUVs, the idiocy, idiocy of politicians, and you know what's going on. Um, I thought that there was a bunch of other tweets on the Arctic, which um, which I can't find at the moment. Okay, but I highly recommend that you. Here's Hurricane Bud. Okay. This is a water vapor. Um, so what it's doing, I can show you on Earth Null School. One of the big problems that isn't, uh, is understudied is we know about air pollution deaths, but also airborne dust levels in the southwestern US is causing higher hospital admissions and it's causing severe health problems, emphysema, emphysemas, lung problems. The problem is, is that there's a distribution of particle size, and when the particles are very, very small particles, they can go deep inside the lung, get lodged in the alveoli tissue, and uh, basically inhibit the exchange of oxygen that you breathe in with the blood, and the ex expellation or of, of, of uh, carbon dioxide that you breathe out. Okay? Um, Arctic sea ice going south, you know, um, this is a really cool drone, got to show you something fun. This is actually a Millennium, Millennium Falcon drone. I just saw um, Han Solo, you know, the movie, excellent movie, really liked, really liked that they're keeping that franchise going. Um, okay, so follow me on Twitter. Um, this is my uh, Facebook page. Um, I, I have been posting quite a bit, um, doing a lot of retweets and stuff of people, um, various things and people post on, on my site and so on. Okay, so have a look. You can follow me. Also, there is room. Just put a note that you saw my videos and I'll make sure that I find room. Um, the NCAR models were just updated, lots of additional stuff going on. This is very worrying. Trees that have lived for millennium, thousands of years, are suddenly dying. When you have all these trees, the, the, I can't pronounce this, bobobs in Africa, these trees have been living alive for thousands and thousands of years. Well, they did a study. Um, we're talking 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 years old, and a study was done recently um, to categorize the oldest trees. So they were cored, they were measured uh, with carbon, carbon isotopes, etc. Um, they, so their age was figured out. And then in the course of the study over several years, you get many of these trees, many of the oldest ones are just dying. Um, so the climate is changing, the precipitation and temperature patterns are changing, and they're going beyond what, what these trees have experienced in thousands and thousands of years and and they're dying this is this is extremely uh concerning um this is another this is a, one of the trees for example 
Okay, uh, lots of information on that. Uh, Earth will survive, we may not. Okay, um, and things like that. Okay, so there's lots of uh, stuff there. This is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Please check it out, please subscribe to it. Um, usually, I try to do a couple videos a week. I've been a bit lapsed uh, lately, but I'm gonna, I'll make up for it. I'll, I'll put out lots of videos in the next little while. Um, this is from a week ago, um, and please consider donating. Um, just click on the PayPal, and please consider supporting my production of videos and my work. It's unfunded. I'm just doing it on my own time um, to try to educate people the world about abrupt climate change and the severe risks that we face. So we're in an emergency situation. I've been saying that for a long, long time. And the city of Berkeley, I believe, has just announced that we're in a climate change emergency. So um, I was invited to the Sierra Club Berkeley group, but I couldn't um, make it. That was a while back. So hopefully, hopefully I get a chance to go out there at some point. Okay, so please check out my site. Now, what I want to show you is, okay, so let's talk about the Arctic now. So this is a polar view of the Arctic. This is the air at the surface. This is the mean sea level pressure. Okay, so you can see um, North America and Hudson's Bay and Greenland's here. And you can see this is back um, uh, about a week ago. So this is uh, June 6th. Um, about a week ago, uh, so the pressure in the center there is 967 millibar. It reached down to about 966 millibar, and this storm, you know, went through. I can show you a couple images. This is the, the pressure. You can look at the winds at the surface. You can look at what the jet streams are doing here. So this jet stream is winding up this particular loop, and we've got a very strong low there. Um, and uh, this cyclone, you can go earlier in the day. Let's go back to um, mean sea level pressure. If it's gonna cooperate with me, maybe it won't. Um, so what you can do is you can cycle through a day, another day, another day. You can go three hour increments with these guys, minus three minus a day, plus three, plus a day, and you can cycle through and you can see how the storm is moving, how, it's, uh, how it was formed, how it's moving, and look at its, its life cycle. Okay, Earth Null School is not cooperating with me at the moment. Okay, so this is Climate Reanalyzer, and this is uh, the two meter temperature, and anything, anything blue or purples is below zero, Anything green is above zero, above freezing, that's Celsius. And you can see this whole area over here in the, inside the Arctic is above zero temperatures. And when you get over to here, it's plus five, plus 10 degrees Celsius, very warm on the continent of, over, over, over Siberia, and that heat is spilling out into the Arctic. You can also see um, all of this heat on su surrounding it, but the Arctic is above zero over large parts of it, which creates a lot of melt ponds and it preconditions the ice for uh, ex extensive melting um, the rest of June and into July and August and into mid-September. Um, now, there may, you know, is this going to be a record year? I mean, who knows? It depends on local conditions. There seems to be a lot of snow cover over the land, over, over the land, and uh, also on the ice. And snow, fresh snow is very highly reflective, about 90% reflective. Older ice, uh, you know, it drops, you get the dirt in it, and et cetera. You know, maybe 50%, of course, the open ocean is about, is, is, is under 10%. Okay, so we're talking about the, the, the Arctic is getting to be a darker, darker place, and therefore it's absorbing a lot more energy and heating up. Um, you can see the, these are the sea surface temperature anomalies and all of this heat, look at this sea surface, look at all this heat going up into the Arctic. Thank you.